Hello everyone, and welcome to a new episode of the Virtual Lab series of video blog presentations on various diverse scientific computing topics. As you can see here, the title of today's presentation is on how first principles simulations can contribute to the discovery of novel materials with interesting physical and chemical properties for applications in batteries and energy storage devices. This presentation is provided by Virtual Lab, the company behind the development of the Materials Square online platform. Materials Square is entirely dedicated to assisting and encouraging researchers from across the world to perform atomistic computational simulations on a wide range of materials science and molecular chemical modeling applications, directly via our integrated powerful cloud computing resources. Being entirely online based, and executable via any basic web browser interface on any device with internet access, the Materials Square platform makes it possible to execute such complex simulations and calculations without the need to install any complicated scientific code locally on your machine, and without the need to have expensive supercomputing clusters at your immediate disposal. Our supported atomistic simulation functionalities and solutions are mainly based on well-established scientific computational techniques such as density functional theory and classical molecular dynamics, and have a very broad range of useful applications in computational chemistry and materials science R&D, which are thus ideally suited for both industrial and academic users from around the globe. We invite our viewers to please consult our products and services offered via the Materials Square platform by visiting its corresponding website, which is www.matsku.com, as noted also in the video description below. So, let us begin our main scientific presentation of today. When it comes to materials used for batteries and energy storage applications, several physical and chemical properties are important. Here are some of the key properties. 1. Energy density. Energy density refers to the amount of energy a material can store per unit volume or mass. High energy density is desirable for batteries as it allows them to store more energy in a smaller space, which is crucial for applications like electric vehicles and portable electronics. 2. Power density. Power density is the rate at which energy can be extracted from a battery. Materials with a high power density allow for rapid charging and discharging. 3. Electrochemical stability. The materials used in batteries need to be electrochemically stable, meaning they should not decompose or react unfavorably during charging or discharging. This ensures the longevity of the battery and its safe operation. 4. Conductivity. The ability of a material to conduct electricity is critical. This includes both electronic conductivity, the ability to move electrons, and ionic conductivity. The ability to move ions. Both of these are important for the efficient operation of batteries. 5. Charge transfer resistance. This property measures how easily ions can move from the electrolyte to the electrode. Lower charge transfer resistance allows for better performance. 6. Cycling stability. This refers to how well a battery can maintain its capacity over multiple charge and discharge cycles. Materials that exhibit good cycling stability lead to batteries with longer lifetimes. 7. Safety. Materials need to be stable and not prone to thermal runaway or other dangerous reactions. Certain materials can lead to safer batteries. 8. Cost and availability. The materials should be relatively low in cost and readily available. Rare or expensive materials can make batteries economically unfeasible. 9. Environmental impact. The environmental footprint of the material, from its extraction to its end of life, is also a key consideration in the modern world. In terms of specific material properties, it depends on whether you are discussing anodes, cathodes, or electrolytes, as different properties are prioritized in each case. For instance, a lithium cobalt oxide cathode is valued for its high energy density, while a graphite anode is valued for its cycling stability and conductivity. Let us now address in more detail the topic of how DFT computational techniques can be employed to compute physical and chemical properties of materials which are relevant for batteries and energy storage applications. Density functional theory, DFD, is a powerful computational tool in material science, particularly for investigating the physical and chemical properties of materials. DFD is a quantum mechanical modeling method that is used to investigate the electronic structure, principally the ground state, 
of many body systems, particularly atoms, molecules, and the condensed phases. When it comes to applications in batteries and energy storage, DFT can be used in various ways. 1. Predicting energy levels. DFT can be used to calculate the energy levels of different states in the material. This is particularly useful for determining the energy density and voltage of potential battery materials. 2. Studying ion migration. Ion migration is a key factor in the performance of a battery. DFT can be used to study the potential energy surface for ion migration and to estimate diffusion coefficients, which can provide insights into ionic conductivity. 3. Studying electrochemical stability. DFT can be used to investigate the stability of materials under different conditions, example, varying voltage or temperature. This can provide insight into the electrochemical stability of the material, as well as its potential for cycling stability. 4. Investigating interfaces and surfaces, the properties of the interface between the electrolyte and the electrode material have a significant impact on the performance of a battery. DFT can be used to model these interfaces and to study properties such as adsorption energy, charge transfer, and interfacial energy barriers. 5. Designing new materials. Perhaps most excitingly, DFT can be used to predict the properties of new materials before they are synthesized in the lab. This can save significant time and resources in the search for better battery materials. It's important to note, however, that while DFT is a very useful tool, it is not perfect. For example, it often struggles to accurately predict properties related to electron correlation, such as dispersion forces or the energy of charge transfer states. Researchers often use more advanced techniques, such as hybrid functionals or many-body perturbation theory, to address these challenges. Furthermore, computational expense can be a concern, particularly for larger systems or more complex properties. Despite these challenges, DFT remains a key tool in the computational material scientist's toolbox. Let us now address the alternative case of classical molecular dynamics, and how it can be employed to compute interesting materials science properties which are relevant for battery applications. Classical molecular dynamics, MD, is another useful computational technique in the field of materials science. In a molecular dynamics simulation, the time-dependent behavior of a system of particles, which can represent atoms, molecules, or larger structures, is observed following classical physics principles. Here are some ways molecular dynamics simulations can be useful in the study of materials for batteries and energy storage applications. 1. Ionic conductivity. MD simulations can be used to calculate ionic conductivities by tracking the movement of ions within the material over time. In these simulations, the mean squared displacement of the ions is typically calculated, and from this, the diffusion coefficient and ionic conductivity can be estimated. 2. Studying phase transitions. MD can be used to simulate heating, cooling, and pressure changes, allowing the study of phase transitions in materials. This is particularly important in battery applications, where phase transitions can lead to changes in material volume which can in turn lead to mechanical stresses and potential battery failure. 3. Interface and surface phenomena. Interactions at the interfaces between different materials, like between the electrolyte and electrode in a battery, are crucial for the overall performance of a battery. MD simulations can provide insights into these interfacial phenomena, such as ion intercalation and deintercalation processes at electrodes, or solvent decomposition at the electrolyte-electrode interface. 4. Structural stability and mechanical properties. MD can simulate the response of a material to various stresses, allowing the study of its mechanical properties. This is useful for examining the structural stability of battery materials under operating conditions. 5. Thermal properties. MD can be used to estimate the thermal properties of a material, like its thermal conductivity or specific heat capacity. This is important in the context of battery safety, as these properties can influence how a battery responds to thermal runaway conditions. 6. Electrolyte behavior. MD is often used to study the structure and dynamics of liquid electrolytes, which is important for understanding things like ion transport and the stability of the electrolyte. 
One important thing to remember is that classical MD simulations treat electrons in a mean field way, which means they're not suitable for simulating electronic charge transfer, band gap calculations, or any other phenomena where quantum mechanical effects are significant. This is where techniques like DFD, mentioned in the previous question, become important. In short, both DFD and MD, along with many other computational techniques, each have their strengths and weaknesses, and are often used in complement to each other to provide a fuller understanding of materials for batteries and energy storage applications. We now discuss some examples of exciting materials science research conducted in recent years which has led to major innovation in the development of batteries and energy storage devices. 1. Solid-state batteries. In the pursuit of safer and more energy-dense batteries, researchers have been developing solid-state batteries. These batteries replace the liquid electrolyte in a traditional battery with a solid one which can enhance safety by reducing the risk of leaks and can potentially allow for the use of metallic lithium anodes, which would significantly increase energy density. Toyota, QuantumScape, and other organizations have been actively researching in this area. 2. Lithium sulfur batteries. Lithium sulfur batteries have been researched as a potential successor to lithium-ion batteries due to their higher theoretical energy density and the abundance of sulfur. Significant progress has been made in managing the challenges of polysulfide shuttling and sulfur's low conductivity. 3. Lithium air, or lithium oxygen, batteries. These batteries theoretically offer extremely high energy densities, potentially comparable to gasoline. However, practical challenges, including poor cycle life and efficiency, have been significant. Research into catalysts, protective membranes, and new electrolyte formulations are making steady progress. 4. Sodium ion batteries. With lithium resources being finite, researchers have been exploring other abundant elements like sodium for use in batteries. Sodium ion batteries could offer a low cost, sustainable alternative if challenges such as the larger ionic size of sodium, compared to lithium, can be overcome, which affects energy density and cycling stability. 5. Multivalent ion batteries. Batteries using ions like magnesium or aluminum, which can carry multiple charges, could potentially offer higher energy densities than lithium-ion batteries. These are very early-stage research but could be a breakthrough if challenges related to the electrolyte and electrode materials can be overcome. 6. Advanced manufacturing techniques. Techniques like atomic layer deposition, ALD are being used to precisely engineer battery materials at the nanoscale, leading to improved performance. Similarly, advanced characterization techniques are providing new insights into battery materials and processes, enabling further innovation. 7. Next-generation supercapacitors. While not technically batteries, supercapacitors store energy and can deliver it quickly. They typically don't hold as much energy as batteries but can charge and discharge rapidly over very large numbers of cycles. Research into new materials like graphene and other conductive polymers are improving the energy density of supercapacitors. This brings us to the conclusion of our presentation. Many thanks for your attention, and we recommend once more to please give a try to our Materials Square online platform for executing atomistic materials and chemical computations directly on the cloud by visiting its website at www.materialsquare.com. Please do not hesitate to contact us by email, as shown here on this slide, in case you would like to obtain further information on the various R&D services and solutions that we provide at Virtual Lab. Many thanks again for your interest and your consideration.